Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, March 13th, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, it's Patch Tuesday, so yes, uh, today's podcast will cover a lot of uh, patches. Uh, and of course, let's start with Microsoft. Microsoft delivered patches for 60 different vulnerabilities. In addition to that, we also got uh, four patches for from Chromium that affect Microsoft Edge. 60 vulnerabilities is sort of a little bit on the average, maybe a little bit on the lower side, but what's kind of really surprising is there are no vulnerabilities here that are already being exploited, so no zero days, no vulnerabilities that are already disclosed, and we only have a total of two critical vulnerabilities uh, and one of them is actually a denial of service vulnerability both of the critical vulnerabilities are affecting hyper v again one is denial of service vulnerability the other the remote code execution vulnerability does require that net hacker actually has access uh, to a virtual machine running within hyper v so it's really more one of these virtual machine escape vulnerabilities other than that, uh, there are a couple other, actually one specific vulnerability sort of of interest, and that's a remote code execution vulnerability in Exchange Server. Now, this doesn't look like it's super easy to exploit. It first requires that attacker already does have access to the Exchange Server. Then by basically taking advantage of one of those DLL loading vulnerabilities, they're able to execute arbitrary code on the server. Again, really more sort of a privilege escalation vulnerability when it comes to the impact. So stick to your normal patch process here. No need to really sort of uh, expedite anything here. And talking about vulnerabilities, uh, one of the resources that we heavily rely on, a lot of vulnerability management uh, processes heavily rely on, is the National Vulnerability Database, or NVD. It's sort of your best uh, one location where you can get vulnerability information in various formats, easy to parse, and uh, typically quite well validated. So for example, you get your CVSS scores, your CVE numbers, uh, what products are affected, all in an automatically parsable format, which means that a lot of sort of automatic tool uh, commercials and open source are relying on it. Sadly, it looks like, well, uh, this uh, resource is no longer operating as well as it should be. Starting February 15th, uh, most uh, vulnerabilities being reported by the NVD have not been fully analyzed, which means they have not been enriched with all the information we are sort of uh, used to. The problem appears here that, uh, well, uh, NIST, uh, the organization that is managing uh, the NVD, is uh, going through a process to try to essentially update, fix some of the processes that are being used to create these vulnerability reports. Some of it is certainly also affected by the increase in volume of vulnerabilities uh, reported. And uh, we'll, we'll see where this all ends up. But in particular, a lot of government processes are relying on this data. So I hope it'll come back soon. There are a couple of sort of open source alternatives like from GitHub and uh, Google, but uh, they don't necessarily, you know, cover it all with the same clarity and uh, consistency as we do have with NVD now uh, for many, many years. I'll link uh, to a blog post by Chris Hughes, who uh, does a quite good job in explaining kind of uh, what's going on here with NVD. And then uh, we do have a new vulnerability in Soho's Manage Engine with a CVSS score of 9.8. Before you uh, get into panic mode, because we have uh, seen a lot of uh, issues with Manage Engine being exploited in the past, note that this vulnerability affects version 9, which uh, is quite out of date at this point and uh, unlikely to still be used. If it is still used, maybe just consider working on upgrading to a more current major version. 
I don't talk a lot about ICS style vulnerabilities, but this one is kind of interesting. It's a vulnerability in Siemens fire protection systems, and it does manifest itself in a buffer overflow in X509 certificate parsing. If exploited, the attacker gets full unauthenticated remote access to the particular device. So CSS score on this one is 10 point zero well and that's it for today thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow bye